Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Tape on Inside the Birds Podcast Network. You are hosted by myself, Clay Harbor, former Philadelphia Eagle tight end, and the man, the myth, the legend, the guy that watches more tape than anybody in the league. And you know, without further ado, who I'm talking about, it's Greg Cassell. Greg Cassell and I will be talking about the Eagles game against the Cowboys what happened on the tape, what we saw from the tape. And then we'll talk about the Eagles Monday night affair with the Seattle Seahawks, the battle of the birds, some say, and we'll, we'll give you guys our thoughts on that from what the tape has shown from the Seahawks, how the Eagles match up with the Seahawks there. So without any further ado, we are going to ask Greg Cassell, man that watches more tape than anybody. You turned on the film, you're watching the game. Obviously, you'll probably watch it live because it was a a Sunday night game. Um, What did you see? What was your first takeaway after watching the tape from this Eagles game? Yeah, you know, I'm watching the tape, and there's certain things that that just continue to jump out to me that uh, it'll be interesting to see where the coaching staff goes with a lot of these things. Um, you know, offensively, one of the things that that has been a factor for a while, and when they're playing well, you can say that, hey, it's not a big deal. But when you're not playing well in a season, as you know, Clay, you played a lot of years in this league, you know that seasons change. You know, what you do weeks one, two, and three, hey, teams might pick up on certain things, and then you need to tweak some things. No team makes dramatic philosophical adjustments in it because you can't in the course of, you know, three or four days, but there's certain tweaks you can make. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that, and, and there's a lot here to unpack. So I'll probably talk a little, you'll talk, you know, we'll kind of work our way through yeah. all this. Um, but, you know, one of the things that stands out when you watch the Eagles is they don't feature motion at all in their offense. They have the, the least, the lowest percentage of the use of motion in the national football league and motion has become a really significant part of the league for the the large majority of teams. And, you know, again, people can say, well, they didn't use motion when they were scoring a lot of points. That's true. But again, when you're struggling a bit and you need some adjustments, you know, I think that motion needs to be a factor to some degree, you know, last year, and you can't count on this every year. Last year, how many times did we see Jalen Hurts make great throws outside the numbers on vertical routes? I mean, it seemed like every time they threw a vertical route, he placed the ball about as precisely as you could place it as if he was handing it to the receiver. But you know, those are not necessarily easy throws. That's not going to happen all the time. And this year, it hasn't happened anywhere near as often. So they've been lacking in those kinds of plays. Um So, you know, the motion is one thing that's really stood out to me, the lack thereof. And by the way, I think someone like Devonta Smith would thrive as a motion receiver. To me, he's your classic Z receiver. And so people understand, you know this, but just so people understand, the Z is off the ball so he can move. He can go in all kinds of different motions. Um, Defensively, I would bet we're both surprised by this. Who would have thought after last season – that the Eagles would not be able to rush the quarterback. Mm -hmm. They've not been able to rush the quarterback. Um, And that's been a a big problem. And one uh, byproduct of that has been the fact that they have the worst third down defense in the National Football League because their secondary is not good enough to play when they don't have a pass rush. So now how do you deal with that? There's, There's different ways, of course, but these are just things that, I've seen sort of building throughout the year, even when they were winning games. And I think the last two weeks, they've certainly come to a head. Yeah, absolutely, Greg. And I'll start with talking about motion. And you're you're right on. Here's the thing that motion does. Sometimes motion will confuse the defense and you'll get a freebie. Yeah, You'll you'll just get an open receiver and you'll be able to, to hit a guy for 10, 15 yards, maybe bust one because of motion then you get to diagnose 
the defense, obviously, if our listeners don't know that, that's all football people know that you, you send somebody in motion. Now, you know, man or zone who's going out with them. You get to really start limiting the answers to the test instead of having a, 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 a test. Yeah. You got four multiple choice. Now you can limit it down to, okay, two multiple choice. This is what it, you don't know exactly what's going to happen, but you start getting ideas and you're getting clues to what defense they're going to run. And then, you know, you have an idea of who you're going to throw the ball to and you have an idea. Okay. If I'm, if I know this is where I'm going, now I can look off over here it is just for a more advanced offense. You can do so many more things. I used to love motion as a tight end. Even yeah, you could see if it was man or zone. I go motion. Okay. Who's going with them now? You can, you can look around, you can see exactly. Okay. So I'm probably running the ball of him. Who's guarding me. Who's guarding me. Oh, it's him. It's that linebacker. Now I know who I'm running my route on. So I know who I'm trying to get open on. So, to just piggyback on Greg's point, advanced offenses need motion. I played, yeah. I had a cup of coffee in New England, only played six games there, but I was there in the offseason OTAs, right? Tom Brady did not have a play without a motion or a shift. Yeah, he yeah. wanted to call the play in the huddle. He sounded like an auctioneer, Greg. One, two, one, two. We got, we got two, two. We have three, and we have three. He talked so fast so he could get out to the line of scrimmage as quick as possible so he can look at the defense. He's shifting the running back from out wide back. He shifted he's, the, the tight end. We got to shift move. He's picking up information so he knew where to go with the ball. That's why Tom loved to do that. So that is something the Eagles need to implement more. You can't be the worst team in the NFL with motion usage. And once again, to just comment on something that, that Greg said, yeah, all right, it's surprising about – this defensive line, this team was built to where you're supposed to have this defensive line that could get pressure on opposing quarterbacks. When you got a good D line and you're getting pressure, you can solve a lot of problems there. Yeah, It's just over there. You don't have to worry about having weaknesses in your back end, your linebacker, Nicobe Dean, obviously hurt early. Now you're bringing in guys, you're trying to fill guys and you don't know who's going to be where you got Bayard mid season. You bring in Roby mid season. You don't, you don't have to worry about that if you're getting 70 sacks in a year. That's yep. not the Eagles team. Yeah. That's Let not me play off a couple of things you just said, which yeah. I think were really important. Yeah. Uh, so we can kind of play off each other. Um, yeah. One thing motion does, and you see it with teams like the 49ers that use a ton of motion. The Dolphins obviously use a ton of motion. A lot of teams do. Yeah. Um, what motion often does is it shrinks your defensive menu because – defenses don't want to get caught up in having all these adjustments to different kinds of motions. Because yeah. if one guy makes a mistake on defenses, you know, that could lead to a 60 yard touchdown. So what motion often does is it shrinks your defensive menu. So now, you know, because of film study through all week long with all your coaching staff that, Hey, if we do this kind of motion, here's the adjustment we're going to get. If we do this other kind of motion, here's the the reaction will get. So, you know, you know, you mentioned Tom Brady. You know, the thing is, is he knew based on the shifts and the motion exactly what was going to happen. So he would win the down before the snap of the yeah. ball, you know, and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to gain as much knowledge of the defense before the ball is snapped. The great quarterbacks, and and by the way, we're this is a general discussion. I don't want people thinking I'm saying anything negative about Jalen Hurts. I'm saying the great quarterbacks, they win a higher percentage of the time before the ball is snapped. They know where they're going with the football based on what they're seeing. Wouldn't you agree with that? No, absolutely. It's it's yeah. huge. Yeah. It's huge. And 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 the other point I'd make is talking about the defensive part. You know, as people know, I in the offseason, I speak to a lot of coaches. That's the way I learn, you know, because I'm constantly trying to learn. And I had a a, a defensive coach tell me this offseason, a well-known one, that he said that the way the league is structured now, corner is the most important position in the league because you can scheme pressure, which, by the way, the Eagles don't do a lot of, and we'll get to that. But he said you can scheme pressure, but you can't cover up bad corner play. And the more I thought about that, the more I think that that's kind of true. If you can't cover well on the back end, you know, unless your pass rush is absolutely dominant, which, you know, to a large extent, the Eagles was a year ago, but it's not this year. 
then you get stuck on the back end. And that's been happening to them this year. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And for me, looking to talk about offensively, to take a little turn here and go talk about the offense. I think that the offense wasn't awful. Looking back, I don't think Jalen played great, but I don't think he played as bad as first look. I'm like, okay, there's some issues here. And like looking at it, I'm like, okay, you can't fumble three times in, in plus territory and expect to win a football game. I mean, that just goes back to fundamentals, holding on to the football. I mean, I don't know what to say about fumbling three times like that in, in three of your best three offensive players, arguably, obviously uh, skilled players, I would say. And uh, you, you got to cut out the turnovers. And besides that, I thought that they ran the ball pretty well. I thought they moved the ball, running the, running the ball a little bit. They had 23 carries over 100 yards. You saw Jalen move the ball a little bit more with some of these. Obviously, he fumbled on one of them with some of these quarterback keepers as well. I thought they did okay there. But, uh, you, you know, when it comes to turning the ball over, and I didn't think they were efficient in the past game as, as they have been, I thought there were some decisions that Jalen made that he could have made quicker decisions, getting the ball out to specific spots. But, you know, overall, I think it's fixable stuff. But, Greg, what was your opinion on how Jalen Hurts played, and did he improve at all? Because I know me and you were concerned yeah. a little bit after San Francisco. Yeah, I don't think Jalen, when I watched the tape, played badly at all in, in this game. Um, but I would say that what, what the Eagles are struggling with right now, and, you know, last year we, we mentioned the fact that they hit a lot of vertical routes outside the numbers, basically go routes or slot fades. They hit a number of slot fades to Devonta Smith a year ago. Um, but the Eagles are struggling to generate explosive plays in the pass game within their schematic structure. Even when you look back in recent weeks, you know, against Buffalo, obviously Jalen, who's as good as there is getting outside the pocket and making those off schedule plays, the big touchdown to um, uh, Zacchaeus against Buffalo, that was an off schedule play. Um, you, they're not generating explosive plays within the structure of their offense. Now there's another discussion, which, you know, again, it's just a discussion. I mean, Jalen Hurts is in the gun all the time. I don't know how you feel about that. 482 of his 500 dropbacks this season have come in the gun. Now, wow. I personally believe other coaches could disagree with me. Maybe you, you'll disagree with me. You know, it's there's no right or wrong here. That's the great thing about football. There's a lot of different ways to do things. I think it's harder to marry your run game and your pass game in the gun. I think I think you can do that better when your quarterback is under center, but that's just my opinion. But obviously uh, they're in the gun all the time. And I think they rely on Jalen's legs to be a major part of their offense, which it was a year ago and it dictated how defenses played, but you know how this league works, Clay. Now teams have had a year, you know, a whole off season to study the Eagles. The run game with Jalen is not as prevalent and not as productive. Um, every once in a while it is sure. Cause he's very good at it. Uh, but it's not the same. So you have to think about other ways schematically to generate both your run game and your pass game. And sometimes I watch them and I think they're trying to figure that out right now. No, absolutely. I think, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think you got to get under center every once in a while and have different options there. And they got the offensive linemen that are, that are versatile. They're athletic, yeah. but they're also big, and they can move guys. And I, I think you can do a lot of different things. You can run duo. You can run power. You can run ISO, but you can also run the zone stuff. You can run the pin and pull, toss crack stuff, and get some of these guys on the edge. So I think you got to utilize the versatility of this line and really yeah. attack the weaknesses of a defense. And I think this is a perfect segue to – jump into a little bit of tape here i think we got some uh some shots of the eagles running game in yeah and they started in the third quarter coming out running the ball and then unfortunately brown fumbled but they came out i think with three consecutive runs i believe yeah. they were all zone but they came out running the football and they had some success i think i think swift had three runs for 19 yards if i'm not mistaken yeah. um and you know that that was a good start you know, there's nothing wrong with lining up and running the ball yeah. with basic run game concepts, zone, gap scheme, maybe yeah. some pin pull. Um, 
but you can't really do pin pull from the gun, you know, particularly well, yeah. but that, you know, again, um, but you know, the run game needs to be a factor. The other thing too, Clay, is the games they played this year, you know, last year they got ahead in a lot of games. They had big second quarters and they were ahead. And then the run game is, is a lot more viable in the minds of, of the, the play caller when you're behind and they've been behind a lot this year. Um, you know, the run game play callers start to get impatient with the run game. You know that because the run game is, is not necessarily an explosive play element. It's more of a sustaining element. And when you're behind, you know, you, the, the sustaining element of your offense often doesn't seem like the best way to go. You want to try to create some explosion plays, which percentage wise clearly happen more in the pass game. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, here's one of those quarterback keepers we see yeah. from Jalen. And I wanted to highlight this. Uh, you know, sometimes the run there's game. There's a little motion. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a little yeah. motion. But here's what I wanted to highlight. You know, sometimes the run game can be blocked up perfect by the offensive line, but you need Devontae to, to pick up this uh, slot defender. And if yeah. he does, yeah. you know, you might have some action there for taking a five-yard gain into a – you know, 12 yard game, whatever it may be. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the offensive lines do you pick up that guy. He might have some space. And then we go into, uh, you know, Jalen, we talked about the quarterback, the quarterback uh, run game. And obviously here's what you get with this. You know, you, you're getting, you're picking up or losing a defender because they have to guard this five wide that they have right now with the running back in motion. So now it's five blockers on five blockers, and That's Jalen Hurts is your running back. You have a man for everybody. Yeah. So well, it's really something you have to use. And I know Jalen, you know, you got you want the longevity, but you still do have to use that because that is one of the reasons he is such an efficient and effective quarterback and, and, because and, he can do all that. And who knows? Maybe that's one thing they're going to go back to, uh, Clay. You know, Jalen being a bigger factor in the run game and trying to dictate just what you said, lighter boxes. You know, if you add motion into that, as, as we saw there when they did motion, somebody has to react to it. So, you know, what you're trying to do is create lighter boxes, try to impact gap integrity in the run game by the defense, create some issues, and, and then you can have bigger runs. I mean, that's – you know, there's a lot of factors here. And again, I'm not, this is, I'm, you know me well enough now to know that I don't rip coaches. This is not about, oh, play call. You know, I, I never do that because I'm not there during the week. And I, and, and unless I'm involved in the process, I, I don't, I would never do that because I'm a process guy. That's what I love about yeah. watching tape. I love the process. So I don't, I don't rip coaches. That's easy to say, well, I don't like that play call. That's easy. You don't even know what goes into these play calls. So every time I see anybody who talks about, well, I don't like the play calls, I just tune that right out because th that person's telling me they don't know anything. Um, so I will never do that. But, you know, just talking general football, you know, concepts of football, those are things I do know from doing this for a long time and spending a lot of time talking to coaches. Yeah. No, absolutely. And here's um, just talking about the run game. You know, people want the Eagles run the ball more. Here's just a, you know, a little five yard pickup. And you can see, you know, this is just a, a zone scheme and a, and a cutback by yeah. by Swift there. And I, I think the Eagles made a point to, to get more on the ground and to make sure and they come back and, they, you know, they run the ball again and they had some success. Yeah. And they're getting in the plus side of the, of, of the field. But then you'll see what happens. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the drive that, uh, you know, you fumble and you this can't have been the, the start of the third quarter drive, right? Where then uh, AJ Brown fumbled. Yeah. You know, and, and they had a really good opening drive and then Jalen fumbled on, on the, uh, on the design quarterback run. Yeah. And yeah, yep. there's the fumble by AJ Brown to start, you know, so I didn't think their offense was bad in this game. I mean, it's easy to say it was because they didn't score an offensive touchdown. Um, you know, but obviously turnovers do happen here and there. You have to be able to come back. But the other issue has been their defense. Their defense has really not been stopping people. So what happens is if they make a mistake and, you know, hey, look, good teams make mistakes. You know, Brock Purdy threw an interception last week in the first quarter. That didn't end the game for the 49ers. You know, sometimes these things happen in games. Um, you know, so but when your defense then is struggling and all of a sudden – 
you feel you're down or you feel like, oh, we don't really have a margin for error on offense, you start to feel like you have to throw the ball and continually make things up and compensate. And that's hard to play that way. No, you're absolutely right. And as a player, you know, you feel that when you got a defense that you trust, there's not as much pressure on you to make these plays. And I've been on some teams that had some good defenses and teams that haven't. And it is a feeling when you have, when you know, you can, you can really trust your defense. It just gives you a level of freedom yeah. that you can go out. And even as a play caller, you can call different plays because you're like, Hey, if we do give the ball back, we're going to be fine because I trust yeah. our defense to get a stop or make it really yeah. hard for them to get some points. So, that's a big aspect of the offensive struggles too, is the fact that this defense isn't the isn't the same as it's been last year. And before we um we move on, Greg, to uh to uh talk about some of the, the Seattle game, I wanted to tell you guys about a partnership that we have with Manscaped. The season for a fresh cut is finally here with the sponsor of today's show, Manscaped. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming have launched their fifth-generation lawn mower to help you avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Take care of your special snowflake and watch your South Pole shine like never before. Get the best docking stuffer of all time by going to manscaped.com and using promo code TAPE20 for 20% off and free shipping. Miss Claus will thank you. Everybody knows the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is the crown jewel of the holidays. It is skin safe technology, is a lifesaver, and known for reducing nicks and cuts on Santa's sack. Don't forget the Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit and Handyman Electric Face Shaver to cover all your facial hair needs. Get rid of those nasty icicles from your nose and your ears with the Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Take care of your chestnuts with Manscaped Boxers 2.0. There's even the Shears 3.0 Nail Grooming Kit. Get 20% off and free shif- shipping with code TAPE20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use promo code TAPE20. TAPE20. T-A-P-E-20. And now, Greg, after that, you know, tough game for the Eagles. Two losses in a row for the first time since 2021. But their team they're playing Monday night has lost four straight games. And they played against some good teams now. Yeah. They played against some good teams, but they have lost four straight games. When you turn on the Seattle Seahawks film, and obviously they had Drew Locke playing last week, and we think Geno Smith will probably be back. Not 100% sure on that, I don't think. But assuming Geno's back, Seahawks, what are you seeing on tape from the Seattle Seahawks? Yeah, there's a lot of things to look for when you put on the Seahawks. Let's start with their offense. You know, a year ago, 2022 season, they were one of the highest percentage multiple tight end personnel teams in the league. Um, They were up near 40% in terms of two and three tight ends. And Geno Smith really thrived in that personnel group because they did a lot of things, a lot of boot action, a lot of different things that were really effective and that allowed Geno, allowed the throws, the reads and the throws to be defined for Geno Smith. And he was really productive. We know he had a great year last year. Um, They started this season the same way because they had drafted Jackson Smith and Jigba with the 20th pick in the first round, but he missed almost all of training camp and the early part of the season. So they were still a multiple tight end personnel offense. But when you draft a player in the first round, and, and he's a very talented kid, Smith and Jigba, yeah. um, you want him in the lineup. So now they're trying to kind of figure out the best way to sort of mix and match multiple tight end personnel and 11 personnel with three wide receivers. Because you do different things out of those personnel packages, Clay, as you know. And I think they're trying to figure that out. And it's been bumpy at times. And what's hurt that as well is Kenneth Walker was hurt. He's been in and out of the lineup. He's the back they really want to play because he gives them that explosive element. Uh, Zach Charbonnet is much more of a grinder. Um, yeah. He's not doesn't really give you 
uh, an explosive element. He almost runs like a, a big fullback. So, you know, now that Walker's back, we'll see, because we know Pete Carroll wants to really start the offense with the run game. Uh, so now they have their people back, and, uh, you know, it looks like, you know, we'll go this week, barring anything unforeseen. Um, so they do have weapons. That's the thing. I mean, when you look at their 11 personnel package with Metcalf, Smith, yeah. and Jigba, and Lockett, those are good players. Yeah. So, And they've got three tight ends, by the way, that all serve different roles, and they're all good at what they do. Yeah, so definitely. this is not an easy offense from a personnel standpoint. No, I'm with you there. I like uh, I like the three receivers a lot. I mean, DK, a big game last week. Uh, Tyler Lockett and Jigba, obviously a rookie, but he can play too. And, and Gino's done a solid job of getting the ball. Kenneth Walker, the guy's dangerous. Charbonnet, like you said, he's the grind him out guy, 100%. I do like their their tight ends, obviously Noah Font, but then you go to you know Colby Parkinson, Will Disley. Uh, both those guys got – got roles that they yep. handle and they play very well. So offensively, I think the Seahawks are a solid team, but I think this defense, the Eagles should be able to move the ball on. I'm hoping yep. they can at least. And I think, you know, they, they got some decent players, but, you know, overall, I think, uh, you know, Devin Weatherspoons, Weatherspoons is questionable. They've lost quite a few players. Uh, Frank Clark, uh, I mean, Brian Moan, Mike Morris, they've, they've lost a ton of players on that defense. So I think they can take, the Eagles can take advantage of the Seahawks defensively. When it comes to yeah. Eagles offense versus Seahawks defense, what are you seeing there on the film? Yeah, this, in an ideal world, this could be a get well type of game. You know, Witherspoon is a really key piece. Let's assume for this conversation now he doesn't play just, and he may, but let's assume he doesn't. That changes a lot of what they do, Clay, because yeah. Witherspoon was their outside corner in base and their slot corner in sub. So when he got hurt, things changed. What they had to do was they brought Artie Burns in to play slot corner in their conventional nickel and dime. OK, and they and Michael Jackson became the left corner because they play sides. They play a left corner and they play uh, Reek Woolen at right corner. They don't match up. Um, but. And they play a lot of big nickel with three safeties. And that causes a little bit of a problem. Um, Love, Julian Love, did not have a very good game last week. And Jamal Adams is a is a liability in pass coverage. Yeah. So you need to find a way to attack Jamal Adams. Even though the Seahawks do not play a lot of man coverage, you know as well as I do that even in zone, you can isolate players. Because – you can put them in conflict with your route concepts and you must attack Jamal Adams in, in zone coverage because he's not a very good pass defender. Yeah. And I think there's some space on the ground that uh, for, for the, for the Eagles to run the ball yeah. as well, obviously the, the pass coverage, but I also think there is some space on the, on the ground to run the ball. And let's watch a couple of plays here, Greg. Here's a play. You know, Greg's talking about there are some openings in the pass game here. And I think you got Ayuk on who's he who's he going against there? Yeah, and by the way, just go back. Go back. We just spent a lot of time talking about motion. Look what this motion did to the underneath defend the second level defenders. Look at them react to the yep. motion and the run action. And and it just creates an easy throw for what, 12, 13 yards? You know, um, mm -hmm. but you can see how that motion right across the formation by the tight end and the run look just created second level movement. And you, you'll see it from here really well. And you'll, oh, have, yeah. you'll have a passing lane. Boom. Yeah. It becomes pitch and catch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll see it from this angle. And they're playing big nickel, by the way. They've got three safeties on the field. You can see it. Now, yeah. don't forget the Niners. You know, they just played the Niners. The Niners are a heavy 21 personnel team with a fullback, and they play a lot of 12 with two tight ends. Um, the Eagles lived in 11 personnel last week, um, and we'll see what they do this week. But the Eagles did not play many snaps at all last week with two tight ends on the field. Yeah, and here you got the, the 49ers. Yeah, well, they, ran, they run a ton to the left behind Trent Williams and Aaron Banks, and Trent Williams is – you know, the best left tackle in the game. So they feel pretty comfortable running behind Trent Williams. 
yeah and there's so there's some space there i think there's a couple different ways and um obviously here you're seeing the the seahawks get some pressure up the middle yeah, they, 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 they traded for leonard williams about a month ago at the trading deadline he's played well for them they have okay. reed and williams inside both good players um they moved draymond jones predominantly to play on the outside as a pass rusher um so you know it's funny they've got pretty good players um because they have wagner and brooks at linebacker but their yeah. defense has not played particularly well over the last month or so and some of that has to do with their secondary all right, so and this is I wanted to show this because this is literally how the game started, Greg. And seventy-two yard run. Yeah, I thought this was this is wild. First thing you turn on the film here, and they're I mean they obviously the 49ers come out in a tight end full they got twenty-one personnel on the field. Yeah, so they got the, twenty-one the, personnel. Got, they're strong for the field. Down. Yeah, they're they're. Yeah. they're they're stop and run here, at least they think. They're in, they're in an eight-man box. They're in their 5-2 yep. front, and Adams is up on the line of scrimmage. So they're in First an eight-man box. First, and by the way, as, as you know as well as, as I do that you can run against eight-man boxes. I love when yep. people say, well, you can't run. That's ridiculous. Yeah. A couple days ago, me and my girlfriend were trying to find tickets to the big game. And unfortunately, we couldn't. We didn't know if the seats were good. We didn't know what tickets were available. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy your tickets to the big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guaranteed, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, views from your seats, lowest prices guaranteed, all these things are the reasons I love game time. They're obsessed with finding ways to save you money on your tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even up to an hour after it starts. So the event could be started and you could finally decide, hey, I want to go with game time. You can still find the tickets, find exclusive fat flash deals, sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. So it's much more than just sports, any kind of event you want. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code BIRDS, B-I-R-D-S, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BIRDS, B-I-R-D-S, for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Yeah, so there's some, as you guys can see, there are some holes on the Seahawks defense. As Greg said, this is one of those games. If the Eagles is a player, you come in, you just focus on your on your assignment. This is you start watching that film, you go, okay, we match up well against this defense. I think we can take advantage of some of their weaknesses. And it's a game you're looking forward to. You want to get a, you get a bad taste in your mouth from last week. Now you got an opponent who's a solid. Seahawks are a good football team. They've lost some close games to some yeah. good teams. You know, it's not going to be a walk in the park. But this is a team you come in as a player. You can't wait to get on the field. You're watching the tape. They're seeing the same tape we're seeing. They're watching that same film. They're saying, okay, there's some openings here. Jalen Hurts is watching this. Devontae Smith is watching. A.J. Brown. I think we see a big resurgence, a big game from the offense, that bad taste in their mouth come back and show that they can really carry this team. You know, again, I'm not in, in their meetings. I'm not their play caller. Um, you know, I think one of the things I'd love to see, and, and I, I love to see this every week with quarterbacks because I think it helps them get into the game, is quick rhythm throws early, one read, no read type throws. Let Jalen get comfortable. Don't drop him back deep where he has to sort of scan and read and maybe, you know, not see it uh, the way that he wants. Um, just do some things where the ball can come out quick. Hey, if it's a six-yard gain, fine. It's second of four. That's a good play. You know, just get him feeling comfortable in rhythm and then start working off that. And we'll see. And, and, and you know, then your offense can generate some rhythm because, you know, 
it sometimes I I feel watching the tape. Sometimes I feel their offense has become a series of individual plays. And if they make some great inj- individual plays, hey, that's great. It they're capable of it. They've got really good players. But I don't think that's the way you build offense. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you there, Greg. I'm I'm with you there. And I think we gave you guys a nice recap of Eagles Cowboys and then what the tape showed against the Seahawks. So. Looking forward to this Monday night football game to see if the birds can get back on track. And from myself, Clay Harbor, former Eagles tight end, and Greg Cassell, the man, the myth, the legend, NFL Films, guy who watches more tape than anyone. We'll see you guys next week, another episode inside the tape. And hopefully next week we'll be celebrating a victory after two losses in a row. Fly, Eagles, fly. Be sure to check out our friends at PHLSportsNation.com. They're enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams. For the fan, by the fan is their motto. So make sure you check them out at PHLSportsNation.com and on Twitter at PHLSportsNation. 